Hello again, everyone. Um, a lot of people have said that they have this set of dies or they'd love this set of dies. And uh, so I thought I'd have another little play. You may remember that this is the card that I posted using this space and a few of the branches as a whole bunch. So what I thought I'd do today was to just uh, have a little think about um, what you could do to the containers. This one I used um, pigment powders with Versamark to give the effect and then embossed with an embossing tool to give it some dimension. Um, I've started playing around today and I, I cut out this one. This is the largest, this one here. And that is what you get when you cut it out. I'm not over thrilled on this kind of line around the outside, but I had a play and I came up with this one. And I think you'll agree, it looks kind of more like a vase than this one does. So I'll just show you quickly how I did that one. So, so quick, so simple. So here I've got a splatter die. This one is an old Stampin' Up! one, but loads of companies do splatter dies. So a little Distress Oxide, this is Pumice Stone, and I just stamped, over stamped, like that. That's all. Then, with um, a blending brush, just added a little dimension around the edge. So just very gently coming in from the edge to the middle. There we go. I normally feel that the light source in my studio, my, my studio, it's a posh word, isn't it? In this spare bedroom um, is coming in from the right. So the larger shadow will go on the right hand side of whatever I'm doing. So there'll be a little on the this side, but more on that. So, and there we go. Uh, already, although the actual piece of card is flat, it looks more rounded. So now what I'm going to do is to just put a glaze over all of it. So I'm just going to stamp it onto my Versamark pad like that and then dunk it into my clear embossing powder which is here. I'm going to spot it for a moment now. I you notice the hesitation. Right, dunk it into there, fish it out and now we'll heat set it. I have had my heat gun going this morning, so it probably won't take too long to heat up to a reasonable temperature. You may notice I've got a different work surface today. I bothered about the flickering and I don't think actually now after all this it's it's the surface. I think it might be the light. I may have to, well I've ordered a, a new light to see what happens. Now you can see it started to get a bit of dimension already but with this one what I did was the old faithful embossing mat. So that's all set now. Don't want to turn it over too soon otherwise you'll damage the clear embossing and then just with one of these ball embossing tools just give it a little bit of a a rub around in the direction that you want the dimension to appear so upwards through this the neck of the jar and around for the bulbous part and so there we go already it looks more rounded so to keep it like this you can put a little foam tape behind the middle of the back and then glue around the edges so that's one another thing that I thought you might like to do 
here's another one from the same set, is to choose a little bit of one of the branches. Now, I die cut one here, and I thought we could add a little bit of one of the branches like that to the vase to give it some additional dimension. So I'm going to glue the back of this. I will trim it once I've got it in place because I don't quite know exactly where it's going to kind of go. So I just glue the back. Make sure we've got glue all over. I don't think I'm going to be using this bit right at the end. So, okie doke. What do we like? About like that, I think. Have some round the neck as well. Did I glue that bit? I don't know that I did. Let's put a little spot of glue on that bit. Okay. There we go. So it'll appear as if the, the design is coming from round the vase, jug, whatever you care to call it. So now I'll just trim the bits. Now we can give it a little bit of colour as well. I actually don't like that bit there. Let's just take that bit off and put a, a bit of something else on. I might like that bit there. Add to just a drop more glue. Let's just see. Yeah, I think that's okay. Like that. Let's cut off the excess. There we go. Now that already has got a bit more life, hasn't it? Again, I would um, maybe colour it, maybe add a bit of shade. Let's do the same colour while well, we're at it. We're just, it's out, this colour's out. Let's just do it. So we can put a little colour on one side. Just a touch on the other. Just on the edge. It's really such fun doing this kind of stuff. I am sure you will agree. And just put a general bit of very light colour all over. It doesn't show much on this, but once it's against the white card base, it will show more. So there you go. There's another one. If you wanted to, you could glaze that one with Versamark exactly the same way as I did with the other one. So, let's just assemble a little bit of this. Let me just wipe, wipe down my mat. This is, um, I think this is a Sizzix craft mat that I've cut down. This is a, a baking sheet or something, that, you know, work surface protector, silicon. I thought it was, it's a pretty colour, it's nice for me to work on. Don't know what it's going to be like to look at as a video, but we will see. Anyway, let's just, um, that's just a couple of ideas for vases. Um, so uh, let's just put something together in a card for you. So I, there's the one, I've used the same size card. I have cut a slatted background from that. I don't know where that die came from. People who've seen me hold, hold up my boxes of, of dies. I have so many. I can't keep packets with dies. There's just too many. So I'm sorry, I can't remember where it's from. But um, if you if you had an um, electronic cutting machine, you could just do one of these easily. Just, you know, make some little boxes and just, just cut it out. It shouldn't be too difficult. Anyway, what I thought I would do is... 
perhaps one of these on there with a couple of twigs coming out of it maybe or a big one whichever doesn't much matter does it really I've got another couple of little ones there but there's all sorts that you can do another thing that you can do with um vases and things like that to make them look a little bit more interesting is to just pop them through an embossing folder any kind of embossing folder will do really just give it a bit of texture what's the first one i come to oops it's using this yes this is snow this is snow let's just do it and then you can see let me take my I'll just emboss this, this uh, vase there we are did this just because it was it was the one that was nearest around and look at that already that looks more interesting doesn't it you could drag a bit of ink over that the world's your lobster, as I've often said. You know, you can just do what you like, which is the best way for doing this, really. Um, I'm just playing, really, at the minute. There, see? Look. It's interesting. Um... Then you can glaze it. Just do the the business with the with the first mark and clear clear embossing, and you've glazed your vase, and it looks much more like a real vase. Anyway, let's just let's just carry on with this one. Um, as to the background, you, uh, this is one of my squished flower things. You could put one of these behind, which is quite a um, sympathetic colour with the vase. A bit too sympathetic, I think. It doesn't the vase doesn't sort of show up enough. There's a sort of a teal coloured one. It's quite nice. And that's just plain card. If you've got any backgrounds that you think look a little bit suspect and you don't like them, if you use them behind a die cut that where well, you can't see all of it, sometimes it elevates it so much you wouldn't believe it. So I think we'll use that. Whether we use um I've got the rest of the brown here that I, I cut all these branches out from, you see, and the the stamen-y things, the middly bits, that might. Oops. That looks quite nice, doesn't it? Look. We'll see. We'll see about that. Let's just sort the... Let's just sort this lot out. Let's put the vase on, first of all. So here's some foam tape. I'm nearly about to use a new, a new one, I would think. This one's getting mighty low. My sticky scissors, or non-sticky scissors, should I say. The ones I use just for sticky things. These are uh, coated. I've had them for so long, you can see by the state of them. But occasionally, even so, even though they're coated, they're quite worn and they do get a bit sticky sometimes. So I just give them a spray with Crafter's Companion Stick Away. And uh, it dissolves the adhesive and makes it, you know, reasonably easy to... Um, to get the sticky off do you know i'm just i was just thinking then that's why i hesitated i shouldn't have done them straight should i i should have done them on an angle like that so then they wouldn't have gone in i don't they might be a bit wide to go into here but just in case another time i think i'll try and remember to do them that's okay now what i don't want is that to be squished and stuck to whatever colour I put on the back. Because if I'm putting the rest on foam tape, um, I don't want one place that's going to be depressed. So I would just sprinkle that little bit there with some talcum powder. And it would stop that sticking from anything else other than what it's sticking to already. Anyway, that's by the by, really. So now there's these two. I mean, you can put as many as you like in, really. But the 
tall one straight up and the other one going over. I think probably. Do I need more than two? The fact there's about half a dozen of these things means you have quite a choice. That's quite nice like that, isn't it? Right, let me see if I can remember where they are. Oh, that one's the wrong way up. Does it look as nice the right way round? No, it doesn't. Oh, useless. Let's just see. No. Do you know, that way it was lovely, wasn't it? It just crossed over that way. Have I got one that does that? This one. This one is a little bit like that, but it's a bit tiddly. No, I don't like... See, I just like that one, but it's facing the wrong way. And this one's a bit too much, I think. Yes, yeah, too much. Oh, what a nuisance. Will this one do? I don't know. I want a fancy three for some reason, but I just don't know. I'll have that one, I think. Okay, let's put this one first. Where's my big fat glue? Let's just see if we can get this. Okay. That one went over there somehow. Okay. This middle one's going straight pretty much straight up. Let's try that. I think that when you're, you know, deciding what you want to do, it, it is good to have a little play around and, and just see what you think looks best. Okay, and this one was going to cross over ever so slightly. I suppose I could have put that one on back upside down, but the die cut does look funny from the wrong side, I think, anyway. Right. There we go. Now, I've cut a whole bunch of little flowers and I've, I've cut some brown from this same piece of brown card. Um, some of the middles. So let's just whop a few of these on, shall we? Here's my embossing mat again. Let me just wipe this gluey bit there. Okay. Right. Um, flowers. Here they are in my little pot. I got this from a little man. I think it was at the end of the Victoria Falls in Zambia. Which one do I want of these? We had a wonderful holiday. Right. Um, my glue here. Keeping that away from that. And I'm going to start where these little kind of nodey things are. We'll put one. On there. Let's just see what the brown middles look like inside. Let's see. Should have done this off, shouldn't I really? Let's just see. Oh, that's quite nice, isn't it? I think we will continue, definitely. Larger blooms at the base, smaller as we go up. Oh, here's mine. Let's just do a bunch. There we go. Right, my glue. How many have I got there? Five. One, two, three, four, Five. One. Two. Two. Stay. 
Some of it's going through to the mat below, I suspect, but it doesn't matter. Let's see if I have four coming up. And some middles. I think there's one more in here. There it is. That's it. They are tiddly, I have to say. They are tiddly. But I don't mind them. While I can cope with them, I'm happy to. Right. That's the right side. Let's just push it down with one of these. Do when they get too sticky. Right, the others I think are in the die, which is here. So let's just push them out. It's nice that they're all stuck together because um, this die would be frightfully small, wouldn't it, if it was just this much by itself. Let's turn that over. And I think then we will stop. Actually, this turquoise of the mat looks quite nice behind it, doesn't it? I could put a piece of that behind. If I want any more flowers, I'm going to have to cut some more middles. But what I did with the other one was to just put a tiny marker dot in the tiny ones because the middles are too big for the flowers. So there we go. Well, not much came through. So I can decide what background I want to put on, if any, what sentiment I want to put on, if any. Uh, what shall we do? Let's have a look at this one. I think that's quite nice actually, don't you? That's quite dramatic. Let's do that. Let's do this. I'll just chop it off. Only just, only just long enough. Oh dear me. I've only got one more of those. Right, I will. I'm going to have to wait until those have dried, I think, before I turn this over to put the foam tape on. But I'm going to put foam tape on. Am I going, where am I going to put it? I can decide whether I put the foam tape on the back of this, so that is at a distance, or whether I put foam tape on the back of that, so that this is proud of the front. I'll decide. I will decide. So take a look on Instagram, on the community tab. Um, on my YouTube channel and on my Facebook page and you'll see what I've done. So have a bit of fun, adapt your dice, make them look a bit more exciting and um, the description or the, the number of this particular die set and the card I use etc will be in the description. I think some people don't know quite about that. It doesn't, it isn't patently obvious where it is if you look at the screen and you see the video underneath the various settings and it says something, something, something more dot, dot, dot. If you click onto that more, then you'll see the description and any other information. So that might help those people who often ask me for something that the information is, is actually right there. OK, well, as ever, thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. <laughs>